Hi everyone, this is Ashutosh. Welcome to this video. Today in this video, we are going to see new features in Rome release, which came for flow designers. Okay. I'm pretty excited because I was looking for this feature from last couple of release and finally it has arrived uh, because there is always a pain in handling errors in the integration, right? And flow designers, I think it's it's the way to go forward for doing integration using integration hub as well. So what we are going to do in this video is see how the error evaluation part works in actions how the error evaluation part works in the flows itself and how you can set it up right along with that i will also show you what new transform uh, functions has arrived in rome release and couple of properties which are really important uh, if you want to do audit on your flow designer because there is some change done there as well so without wasting time let's jump to action this is the action which uh, I have created for this demo. But before going into the details, just understand why we are doing this. It is because, let's say if there is any error in your flow or in your action, and if you want to take a remediation action based upon the error, then you can do it. For an example, uh, let's say if you if you're doing some integration and after a couple of months, the integration fails, or there is some certificate issue or credential issue and you are not even aware of it and if it fails then you should get notified about it right like for example an email or an incident to your team so what service now has done is they have created a functionality which will automatically catch the error and it will trigger a set of actions or a subflow to remediate it or to to create an incident or to log that particular error or to send a notification right in past this was not available because and and that's the reason uh, uh, i like this feature a lot because in past whenever there is there was an error happening for any integration we have to explicitly code something or put some extra actions or that error handling subflow uh, to get rid of uh, the errors or to get notified let's start so this is the action which I have created. I have simply created one input uh, called as incident ID. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to retrieve incident details from one remote instance, which I have. Uh, you can see that I have set it up here. So I have this remote instance. We are going to use table API to retrieve the incident details. And I have configured it in a such a way that it will fail. So I have, I'm using a wrong credential here so that it will fail and then I can show you what happens. Now, if you compare this form with the form in the Quebec release, you will not find this field, which is called as if this step fails. Here we have two options. One is stop the action and go to the error evaluation. So it will stop the consecutive. Let's say if there are, you can see number one, if there are three or four um, steps in this action, it will stop execution of those two, or it will not even execute those two and directly jump to the error evaluation part. If we select don't stop the action and go to the next step, what it will do is it will evaluate all the steps which are here and then only go to the error evaluation part. Okay, it's your choice what you want to do, but I prefer stop the action and go to the error evaluation part to save on the transactions. Let's say if you have multiple rest calls here, you should always use this option. It will save your transactions if something fails at the beginning only. Let's test this. Uh, before testing, I will show you how I have configured the error evaluation. So you can see if the status code not equal to 200, then I need to set the status code and the error message, which is, you can see the output here, action status. This action status is only for error evaluation, which consists of two variables. One is integer and one is string, which is code and message. So. Uh, for example, if I click on edit, you can see you can set it up like this. You can always use add error condition button at the top to add this error condition. I'm going to set this status code with the status code which I'm getting from the rest call. And I'm going to set the message which I'm getting from the rest call. And then this we can use in flow so, so that, you know, uh, 
you can make it visible or you can put this error on the incident which will be created for let's say for your team as a developer to fix the error right just a thought let's test it uh, what i'm going to do is let's go here um click on test i have this incident run i'm also going to show you how this action will look like when we use it in flows so but first look at this once i click on this you can see it has failed and you can see the action status it has two variables one is integer code this is 401 because yeah definitely it is invalid password in uh, combo if i go in detail so if you see like this you will find like okay for example this was the error message which i have mapped with um which i have mapped with the action message and this is the status code which i have mapped with <clears throat> the message here in the uh, action status so this is how the error evaluation works now let's look at the flow um, which i have created to show you what happens when we use this kind of actions in the flows so i have created just a simple flow which says okay it will run daily and this is the action which i'm using so you can see the output of this particular action is action status with two variables in it one is code and one is message like i showed you right now i'm going to keep this error handler uh, false because i don't uh, because that is a next feature which is error handling inflows we will look at that as well but before that let's test this you can see what happens now yeah uh, you can see it has given you the error it has properly same what whatever you saw in the execution but you can see that okay these two objects are set right uh, or this object is set with the two variables properly now depending upon what is there in this particular action status object we can actually trigger the error handling flow so for example i'm going to activate this let's say i'm going to put a if condition here for example let's say check status code and if the status code which is here is not 200 then what i will do is oh close then then what i will do is i will simply create one incident for my development team so that they can look into the incident and start working for example assignment group uh, application development i'm going to put i'm going to populate the description with the error code so let's say this one and with message as like this right and short description will be simple um in e-bonding integration as field for an example and done right and after that i will simply i don't have end but will simply end the flow now let's see how this works so test run yeah so here you can see error caught right because here there is obviously an error which is 401 and depending upon that error you can see this has triggered right error handler has triggered which says okay 401 not equal to 200 definitely and then it has created a record let's have a look at the incident how it looks uh, just to give you a feel how it will work in real time scenario so you can see the error this it has been assigned definitely caller can be set as per your need uh, but here 
for now we are just going to keep it plain and simple so this is how uh, error handling works and this is really 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 cool when you actually start using into your day to day life and uh, integrations i think this will save at least for me a uh, huge number of time or large amount of time uh, to code the error handling flows last part in this particular is you can see completed error caught now there are three statuses for errors for the flow after room release one is completed error caught another is completed error skipped and last one is only error so that error will be set if there is no error handling flow defined and if there is an actually error in the error handling flow so the flow will go to error you can see if the action fails you will see completed error caught and if there is any error in the flow this particular state will be saved and error skipped um, it is like okay there is an error but you want to skip it i showed you something like okay um for example this one yeah here i want to uh, don't stop the action and go to the next step in that case it will set okay error caught and skip it so these were the two basic feature new features which service now gave in the room release and let's see a uh, few extra features or, or one last feature which is new and that is this transform function here you can see in math we got many so we got kind of square root i can actually show you the comparison because i have one uh, instance which is still on quebec and if you see here in math we already only had five but if you go to <laughs> rome you will see there are a lot right same goes with um i think string because here ends with replace string is available now but it was not there in uh, the cubic you can see that right so this is the third new feature two important tips or points which service now has changed in rome release is the flow the execution details of the flow will only be generated when you click on this test so if you are testing the flow then only the execution details will be generated by default this is done to improve the performance of the system right but if you want to log or you if if you want um what do you say if you want the execution details for each and every flow yeah definitely it's your choice you can go modify the property uh, i will look at the property for you guys and that is i think yeah you can uh, i have to search for the property mm. Give me a minute. There is one new property. Maybe I will put it in my uh, description. But there are a couple of properties which service now added, which will define okay for which action or or when you want to do the logging of that particular flow. And the last one, there is one table called as variable underscore dictionary. So this now is going to retain it for limited time, and it they I think for one year I think, uh, and then they are going to remove the data from that evaluation if it is not executed for that limited number of time or those variables which are in that table. So these are the two changes. Um, we are coming to an end of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any comments, please leave it into the chat. I'm also going to put this video on community. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I, I'm reachable on my LinkedIn, uh, which I will be putting in my description of this video. And I will be happy to help you guys. Thanks for your time.